Last month, when I first joined university to study mathematics, I was excited to learn the hardest subjects. Differential geometry, complex analysis, hippopity, hippopity, hip hippopotamus. But when I was finally in a maths lecture, the professor said this. All right, class, so today we're learning how to count. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? Yep. We were defining the natural numbers, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on. And we were doing that for the whole hour. I'd be lying if I said it didn't make me question my decision to study maths. Knowing how to do this seems pretty useless at first, but it offers a glimpse into the discipline of mathematics, which shows how all truth rests on a shared, rigorous framework. First, we'll define... Let me just fart. First, we'll define some axioms, which are statements we assume to be true so that we can deduce other statements from them. First axiom, zero is a number. Second, every natural number has a unique successor, which is also a natural number. The successor of zero is one, the successor of one is two, and so on. Third, zero is not the successor of any natural number. We're not worrying about negative numbers here. Fourth, different numbers have different successors. And fifth, if a property holds true for the number zero and when it is true for n, it must also be true for n plus 1, the property is true for all natural numbers. This one often causes the most confusion, but it's just saying that when something is true about 0, and when a statement is true about one number means that it's true for the next number, then it must be true for 1, and also 2, and also 3, and so on. These are called Peano's axioms, and from this we can prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. But right now, this doesn't actually mean anything. I've just written a bunch of symbols on the board without actually defining any of them. So what do each of these things mean? Well, 1 is just the successor of 0, and we know 0 is a number from Peano's first axiom. We define addition as a plus b, which has two properties. If b is 0, then a plus b is a. And when b is not 0, a plus b is the successor of a plus c, where b is the successor of c. All this is saying is that when you have a plus b, which is a plus the successor of c, this is the same as the successor of a plus c. Equals can simply be defined as the same as, and 2 is the successor of 1, which is the successor of the successor of 0. Now we've defined our symbols, we want to prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. So a is 1 and b is 1. Using our definition of addition, b is not equal to 0, so a plus b equals the successor of a plus c, where b is the successor of c. So a plus b equals the successor of a plus c, and since b is 1, which is the successor of 0, c must equal 0. So a plus b must equal the successor of a plus 0. According to our definition of addition, a plus 0 is just a. So a plus b equals the successor of a. So finally, we can just plug the numbers in. a is 1 plus b is 1, which equals the successor of 1. The successor of 1 is 2. And that is how you prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Hey, were you even listening? Uh, yeah. Then how do you prove 1 plus 1 is 2? Uh, 1, 1, 2. No, you use the successor function. No, no, look, it's easy. One, one, two. Click this video if you want to see more. Now piss off.